Who said the same thing about Easter? Well, the city comes alive at Easter, too. Is there nothing about holidays that excites you? Well, there is one thing. You come alive. <laughs> Moving pictures. When are they going to give up on that? Nobody likes them. I quite like the pictures. I once saw one with creatures from Mars. <gasps> oh, I hear there's going to be vaudeville tonight. Acts from all over. Now, that sounds all right. Mm. Know me? How lovely. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> Thomas, isn't that that inspector, with, uh, the one whose wife has the glass eye? I think so. They're so charming. We should go say hello. Not right now, Margaret. Why not? I owe the inspector a few dollars. Uh, excuse me, ladies. I need to have a word with Murdoch. <sighs> Sir, you're just in time. I have an announcement. Spit it out, then, Higgins. Ruth is with child. Oh, <laughs> congratulations, Henry. Uh, procreation. The human race is nothing if not relentless. That's marvelous. I didn't think you had it in you, Higgins. Congratulations. <laughs> That's terrific, Henry, but uh, shouldn't cigars and celebrations wait till the actual birth? I mean, not just at an announcement of something still months away. Well, who cares? We'll have cigars and celebrate every day. To Hieronymus Higgins Newsom. Oh, no, no, it's all wrong. Where did we find you wet brains? Were you grown on a dirt farm? George, that's Obi Stratford. Aha! Some fans of VOD, I see. I hope you'll all be at the show tonight. I've got acts coming in from all over. Not to mention yours truly. Ah, look at this lovely lady. Oh, I tell you, the way the ladies dress in the big cities these days, woo-wee! <laughs> I tell you, styles keep advancing. I hope I live five years longer. <laughs> Is that meant to be funny? <laughs> I believe the joke lies in the incongruence of lasciviousness. Just enjoy it. Obi Stratford is the biggest star in vaudeville. That's right. And tonight, all the biggest stars will be gathered here. But none will <laughs> shine as bright as Obi Stratford. <laughs> oh, what in God's name? <laughs> It would appear he fell out of that fourth-story window. Fell or jumped. Perhaps he wasn't a fan of vaudeville, like yourself? He was a vaudevillian, I'd wager. This is the hotel where I'm putting up all the acts. Oh, you knew him? No. Comics are a depressed lot. You put enough of us in the same place, one of us is bound to jump out a window. Detective, I think your line of questioning may need adjustment. Oh? What have you, Miss Hart? The man was dead before he fell. Cause him death? I can't be certain yet, but the presence of petechiae and what appears to be a metallic contact burn suggests electrocution. Curious. I feel awful. I know in my head I'm glad for Higgins, but when he told us, I felt bad. He has something you hope to also have someday in your life. A moment of jealousy is perfectly normal, George. But did you feel the same? No. Honestly. Do you know me as a man prone to fabrications? I believe this is it. Suicide note. I can't take it anymore. Goodbye, written in block letters. The bathtub is empty, but the mirror is still fogged, and there's wet towels on the floor. This lamp is broken. So, the man had a bath, either pulled the lamp in or it fell in somehow. Either way, he died of electrocution, cleaned things up, and jumped out the window. Hmm, not likely. Was there any identification? I can tell you the man's name. Kenny McCluskey. How did you know him? Staying at the hotel. I met him last night. <laughs> Absolute riot. The only amusing man in the city, other than yours truly. And you are? I'm the funniest man in the world. Charlie Chaffin. What happened to the poor sucker? He wants to know. Arthur Carmichael. Charmed. Carmichael. I knew your father. Really? Sad business, that. Can't say I cared for him. Nor did I. You're that city coroner, aren't you? I've heard of you. Good for you. The coroner's office does not release any information on pending cases to the public.
McCluskey was just off the train from Detroit. He said he didn't know a soul in Toronto. If he knew no one here, who would have wanted to kill him? I don't know. But Kenny knew how to make enemies. He was an insult comic. His whole act was making fun. Did you see him insult anyone last night? Oh, I certainly did. There was one man in particular who was hopping mad. <laughs> William, there you are. Any developments? As a matter of fact, Mr. Chaplin is taking us to a person of interest. Indeed. And if you'll pardon my interruption, here he is now. You there? What was your name again? Edward. You're Edward? You said it, pal. You're not Edward. We've met Edward, and you, sir, are not he. It must be a different Edward. What's your surname? I just told you. My name is Edward. He is Mr. Ward, given name Ed Edward. Uh huh. Oh, that's quite clever. <laughs> Did you simply steal Mr. Ward's name and persona? Steal? Of course not. I bought it. The name, the image, the props, the whole shebang. You paid money for. <clears throat> Mr. Ward, I understand that you met a Mr. McCluskey in the hotel bar last night? Kenny, yes, that's right. Threw himself out a window, did he? Well, we're not so sure about that. Confess to it, man. You almost killed Kenny last night with your bare hands. I did no such thing. He likened your hair to a mass of dead rats, and you just about throttled him. Mr. Chaplin, please, I'll conduct this interview. I wasn't angry at him for that. I was angry because he was a disrespectful halfwit who wouldn't know real Vaud if he sat on it. Oh, dear. It's my flatulence sack. Hilarious. <clears throat> anyway, the man was alive and well last I saw him. He was wandering off with the kid here and his little friend, who, by the way, also seemed pretty annoyed with McCluskey. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have no intention of touching this investigation with a 10, nay, 11-foot pole. An 11-foot pole? But the things I wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole. <laughs> <laughs> Something worse. Worse than you would touch with a 10-foot pole. Uh, Mr. Chaplin, your friend was also annoyed with Mr. McCluskey last night? Yes, that's true, but Stanley wouldn't hurt a fly. Detective, this is my understudy and my best friend in the whole wide world. Well, don't just stand there. Introduce yourself, you simpering Claude. <laughs> Sorry, yes. Stanley Laurel. It's lovely to meet you, Mr. Laurel. Uh, it's devilishly hot in here, isn't it? No. Need I write a statement so you have a, a record, Detective? Uh, that won't be necessary at this time, Mr. Laurel. Now, I understand you met with Mr. Chaplin and Mr. McCluskey last night? Only for about an hour or so. It's true I was rather cross with Kenneth. He called Charles a nasty name. I shan't repeat it, of course. <laughs> Fat-headed dope. <laughs> it isn't true, Charlie. That's why it's funny. Like when I call you an upside-down half-wit or a, a desiccated cowpat. <laughs> well, I don't care for hearing my friends referred to in such a manner. Now, uh, Mr. Laurel, uh, when did you last see Mr. McCluskey? Uh, when Charles and I told him goodnight. But I did hear him later on. There was an argument. What? When? This was after you went to sleep, Charlie, oh, um, yes. in the hall at the hotel. A screaming <laughs> match, really. What about? I don't know. But it involved Mr. McCluskey? Yes, he was arguing with Obie Stratford. What? Damn it, Stanley! You, you, you're paying to have this cleaned! You simpering little clod! <laughs> They're all just so funny! I'm afraid I won't be attending the vaudeville tonight. No? Why's that? Something came up. Margaret was quite looking forward to it. So was I. Having you with us, I mean. Maybe another time. No. My apologies. I noticed a curious... Uh, something the matter? No. You can confide in me. I was out with my daughter when I saw a fellow inspector. She knew that I was avoiding him because... Oh, it's happened before. Strange, isn't it? Things we've been told to pretend don't exist. 
I find it hard lying and hiding things. How do you do it, Watts? Oh, same as you. <laughs> Feel bloody awful. Precisely. Mr. Stratford, a witness overheard you arguing with the deceased last night at the hotel. And yet you told me that you had never met him. I never said that. I said I didn't know him. Meeting someone in passing is not the same as knowing them. You argued. What about? He greased someone's palm and ended up with my room. Your hotel room? I'm the host. I'm the biggest name in Vaud. I arrive, and they've given my suite to some kid from Detroit. So the argument became heated? And so what of it? Manager knew who I was. He handled things. Yes, well, Mr. McCluskey ended up dead. Maybe he killed himself because he didn't like his hotel room. He did not defenestrate himself, Mr. Stratford. He was murdered. Well, I got what I wanted. Why would I kill him? Perhaps he insulted you. You became angry. I don't get angry. I, I was standing right here when the man nearly fell on my head. How in God's name am I meant to have killed him? Rather choleric, chap. It does make a good point, though, sir. I don't see how it could have been him. Perhaps he had help. Oi! You there, stop! What is it, Josh? Sir, I was sure I saw somebody back here with a knife. With a knife? Yes, uh, I'm not sure what he was doing with it. Look, George, this rope. He was trying to cut it, but why? It's tied off here to these counterweights and connected to that large beam. Sir, if he'd made it through the rope, it would have fallen directly onto Mr. Chaplin. Dear God. Has someone just tried to kill me? This is mad. Why would anybody want to kill me? I don't know. But this must connect back to Mr. McCluskey in some way. Mr. Chaplin, what room are you staying in in the hotel? 416. Why? I think I know what happened. Come with me. 416. But this isn't my room. No. But it was Mr. McCluskey's room. Room 419. The killer mistook it for 416. Indeed. And the killer, thinking he was in Mr. Chaplin's room, stalked toward the tub, again, expecting to find Mr. Chaplin inside. He throws the lamp into the bath, electrocutes the chap, and only afterwards realizes he's got the wrong man. I don't mean to dwell on the issue, but are you saying someone tried to kill me twice? Let's assume that the killer was indeed trying to kill Mr. Chaplin in both instances. George. I apologize, sir. I'm preoccupied with how poorly I took Higgins' news. Ah, yes. I, too, have had unwanted feelings from time to time about this very issue. Children? Well, yes, George. Seeing how happy Henry is, it's only natural that one would feel disappointed that you don't have that yourself. But there are other joys in life, some of which one may not be able to truly appreciate if he were to be carrying the responsibilities of parenting. Yes, I suppose that makes sense, sir. I still feel what's missing from time to time. But when I look at it in the bigger picture of my life, I can't help but feel grateful and satisfied that things are the way they are. And if that doesn't work, you can always try keeping your mind occupied. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, right. You know, I was thinking, after our last run-in with these vaudeville types, it seems to me jealousy and resentment run rampant among them. Professional jealousy could be a motive. Uh, yes, but furthermore, sir, Mr. Chaplin is a young man. So too is our victim. Perhaps the old guard are feeling threatened. Who among the old guard would be willing to kill to protect his position? You think I'm killing young performers? For what, to save my job? That's madness. I've been trying to retire for years. I can't. Sure, Ed Ward could take over the show. What would people be watching? Just a prop comic and who, Charlie Chaplin? Who's going to want to watch that? Well, 
is it possible, Mr. Stratford, that some of the less successful performers felt they were being supplanted by these younger acts. Could someone have a professional grudge against Charlie Chaplin? Who would bother? Look, I don't know if I could be any clearer about this. These kids, they're not funny. Uh, detective, there's a man who says he witnessed someone holding a knife near the stage. Oh, very good. What are you doing to him? Mm, perhaps I should look into that. I'll go with him. Thank you. Julia, Mr. Ward. Oh, William, watch him. He's hilarious. <laughs> <clears throat> Mr. Ward, I understand you are an eyewitness. Yes, I saw someone with a knife skulking around backstage earlier. Who was it? Well, I couldn't see the man's face, only his silhouette. But his hat was rather distinctive. How so? Hold on, I have one just like it. <laughs> it's here somewhere. Mr. Ward. <laughs> oh, <laughs> here. This is it. A derby, just like this. Except uh, the brim was bent, like so. May I see that? Sure thing. I think I have another one in here anyway. <laughs> Julia, really? He's funny. Please, even I'm funnier than that. <laughs> All right, that's enough. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call the oh, oh, Break it up. Break it up. All right, sir, you're coming with us. Take him away, McNabb. You dang melon heads. What do you think you're doing? We're stopping your father from beating the tar out of you. He's not beating me. It's a show, you morons! I'm fine. Look. Oh. Oh. Huh. That's incredible. It is all part of an act. Sure, we're a family act. That was my pa, Joe Keaton, and I'm Buster. Most impressive. Uh, Constable, bring him back. Don't worry, son. We'll let your father go. Just a moment. George, who is this young man? Uh, Buster Keaton, sir. Oh. Master Keaton, um, is that your hat? Sure. Well, only since lunchtime. Oh, give it to me, please. Finders keepers. That's the law, ain't it? Mm, not really, no. Ah, it's monogrammed. Pie is Fred's gag, Stanley. We need something new. I have an idea about bread rolls and dinner forks, but... Ah, detective. Gentlemen. Do either of you recognize this hat? Like, could be anyone's, why? This hat matches exactly the description of the one worn by the saboteur. This hat? Yes, and it has a monogram inside, the initials S.L. Now, hold on. Stanley, this is your hat. You tried to kill me. No. No! Mr. Laurel, you are coming with me. <laughs> It is my hat, Detective. But I swear to you, I would never hurt Charlie. The attempted murderer was seen wearing this hat. You see, I was rather frantic. I found someone who recommended a cleaners to get that blasted ink out of Charlie's shirt. And I wrote the directions on a piece of paper and put the paper inside my hat. But on my way, I got rather turned around and retrieved the paper from my hat. And somewhere in the process, managed to lose it. My hat, I mean. You put down your hat, retrieved your piece of paper, and in so doing, somehow lost your hat. 
Oh, I am forever losing things, detective. I swear to you, it's true. Why would I want to hurt Charlie? Professional rivalry? You are, after all, Mr. Chaplin's understudy. It is an honor and a privilege to learn from someone so talented. Charlie Chaplin is my best friend. Sir, we've spoken with the other members of the troop, and it appears Mr. Chaplin is not a considerate colleague. The others didn't like him. There is animosity. Yeah, now, that said, Mr. Laurel worships the ground on which Charlie Chaplin walks. Maybe one of the others did it. Well, Mr. Chaplin and Mr. Laurel arrived ahead of the others. The rest only arrived this afternoon. So what do you think? Did this Laurel chap do it or not? He doesn't seem capable, sir. He's entirely deferential and, and clumsy and clueless. Well, that's what he wants us to believe, George. He is a performer, after all. But all we have for evidence is a hat, which he says he lost. It's true. Our only evidence is circumstantial at best. The vaudeville show is tonight. If he didn't do it, it would be a shame to keep him away. The question is, is he funny? Julia seems to think so. Release him. Me and the missus want to see a good show. Good evening, gentlemen. All right, George. Perhaps you and Watts should go to the vaudeville tonight. Oh, yes, sir. But don't be distracted by the show. You must keep your eyes on Mr. Laurel at all times. Right. No, mate, I know why you're upset. It was obvious why I avoided the inspector. You have to understand that men like him wouldn't accept the idea of you being my daughter. You mean he wouldn't accept you if he knew I was your daughter? <sighs> That's right. I know. I'm not angry. Well, then come to the vaudeville tonight. And what would happen if the same situation were to arise? You can't say you wouldn't do the same thing again. No. Oh, perhaps this time he'll approach you expecting an introduction. What then? I don't know. Thank you. I don't think I'll be attending the vaudeville tonight. No, May. You have to understand. I do. You made a difficult choice. And I'm not saying what you did was wrong. It's the world we live in. Yes. And it made clear what we both know to be true. That we can't be family in public. And if we are to try, it would only be painful for both of us. Excuse me, Father. Higgins! Hold up a moment, Henry. What is it, George? Look, I wasn't feeling myself when you gave us your big news, and I just want you to know that I truly am delighted for you. I mean, it may be the greatest thing that could happen in a man's life, and, well, you deserve it. Cigars are appropriate every step of the way. Well, thank you, George. I knew you'd be excited for me. That's why I wanted you to be Hieronymus's godfather. Really? Well, wanted, you know. Ruthie vetoed it. Vito? Miss Hart, isn't it? Would you care for some company? Why would I want that? You seem to be alone. I'm going to watch the vaudeville tonight. Company would only hinder my enjoyment. Well, that depends on the company. Maybe it would be better than the show. That would have to be some awfully impressive company. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? Very nice to see you indeed. This is I'll only be a moment, gents. I need to find my things. Wherever have they got to? What exactly are you looking for, Mr. My Laurel? case. Everything's moved round. Your suitcase? Yes, brown. Uh, yay big. All right, we'll help you look. Uh... Your nose is a deeper maroon than my hat. Slow down on the drinking, sir. Drive your horse into a bale of hay. Of course, I kid, sir, I kid. My father once told me, he said, uh, son, you should always know when to stop if you're going to drink. And I said, I do know when to stop at the next place I come to. <laughs> That's right. And that should suggest to you how much I like Ooh. Mm. This is heavy. What kind of act uses iron gates? Oh, look, it's all been placed right beneath the trap door. Look at this, it's barely held in by a single nail. His name is Charles Chaplin. Please welcome Charlie Chaplin. Come on out here, Charlie. Why is Obie Stratford sharing the stage? He's a monologist. I don't know, but if Chaplin stepped on this, he'll fall way through. And on to these gates. Thank you, ladies and gents. 
Uh, wait, wait! What? What's happening down there? Stop! Somebody's trying to kill you! What? I said! Somebody's trying to kill you. Constable George Crabtree, everyone. <laughs> bravo, 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 bravo. <laughs> we had barely begun. Did you really have to call off my entire show? This trap door was deliberately sabotaged so that the moment someone stepped on it, they would have fallen through onto dangerous iron gates. Mr. Chaplin could have been killed. That had nothing to do with me. Why did you invite Mr. Chaplin onto the stage? I felt like giving the kid a break. It wasn't planned. No one, even Mr. Chaplin, it seems, knew that it was going to happen. Meaning, you are the only person who could have lured Mr. Chaplin to his death. I like the kid. He's at least a little bit funnier than the others. Which could be precisely why you are trying to kill him. This again? How could it be me who cut one of the ropes when I was with you the whole time? You could have had an accomplice. Just as you had someone make a show of nearly crushing you with Mr. McCluskey's body right here on the stage. Ridiculous. Unless you have proof of any of this, I'm leaving. Look, I'm a young man. I know I'm not known to every household in America, but I'll tell you this. Every town I arrive in, I'm more famous when I leave. And I leave many pleased in my wake. <laughs> Women love a man with a sense of humor, so long as he is also terribly handsome. Look at this. Tonight, I performed for barely 30 seconds before the show came to a halt. A young lady still left me a note hoping for a romantic rendezvous. That is quite something. May I see that? How do you know it's from a young lady? Could be from an old lady or a young man. Oh, jealous detective? Mr. Chaplin, I, I believe this could be a ruse. Whatever do you mean? Someone is trying to kill you, and immediately following their latest failed attempt, you receive an invitation to meet someone alone in a secluded place. Oh my. Sir, are you suggesting this note invites Charlie Chaplin to a rendezvous with death? I wouldn't put it quite that dramatically, but yes. Well, that's settled. Rip it up. I shan't be going. Actually, Mr. Chaplin, I believe you will go. The rendezvous is set to take place at this park bench here. Now, the inspector and myself will position ourselves here with a clear vantage of anyone approaching from either direction. Constables will be positioned here and here in order to intercept any potential attacker. And what about me? What about you? I want to be there, too. I don't want anyone killing someone as funny as Charlie Chaplin. Julia. We'll position you somewhere with a pram to keep an eye out. Hmm. My question is, how can we be sure that someone won't take a shot at Chaplin from distance? Unfortunately, we can't. However, I believe Obie Stratford to be our most viable suspect. Now, what? You will be following Obie Stratford the entire time, and you will remain in constant wireless communication with me. I'm meant to wear this? Uh, but, sir, we know that Mr. Stratford couldn't have been personally responsible for each attempt on Chaplin's life. Exactly. That is why we are taking extra precautions to ensure no harm comes to Mr. Chaplin. A bulletproof vest, a metal hat to work as a protective helmet, uh, rubber-soled shoes to guard against any attempt at electrocution, and a smaller, waist-worn version of my portable communication device. Why can't I use this smaller device? I only had time to make one once. I need all this. <laughs> uh, we already know someone is trying to kill me. And you're saying you want to concoct a scenario to allow him to try and kill me again? If I may, the killer concocted the scenario. We're merely trying to use it. By using me as bait. Well, not bait. More like, well, bait, but with protection. Thank you, George. No, absolutely not. The risk is too high. Not just for myself, but for the world. <laughs> I detest immodesty, as you all know. But to deprive the world of Charles Chaplin is to deprive the world of laughter. That is not a loss I can accept. Oh, no, 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 no. This is ridiculous. So I, I, I can barely move in all this. This hat is very heavy. 
Not to mention, far too small, I could barely button my jacket over the bulletproof vest, and, and your communication device means I've had to wear trousers that are far too large. <laughs> so, too, are these rubber shoes so large, in fact, I had to put them on the wrong feet to keep them from flying off. <laughs> George, you're only meant to look like Mr. Chaplin at a distance. You'll be covering your face once at the park bench. Mr. Chaplin, you stay put. I can barely walk in. I know. Oh, Crabtree, grab this. <laughs> you look like a bloody tramp. Good work, George. What do I do now? Uh, just stay put. We'll alert you if anyone approaches. Watts, where are you? Uh, at the Midway, Inspector. Uh, I can see Stratford. He's uh, at the top of the ladder, taking down a banner. Good. Tell us if he moves. Hmm. Sir, do you think that's the killer? It's not Stratford. Sir, it's not Mr. Stratford, but it could be someone working with him. So is that him? It's not Stratford. No, but is it to kill him? We don't know, George. Should we stop him? Wait. Ah, oh, it's just a passerby. George, George, can you hear that? Hear what? It sounds like a... A ticking. Did you say a ticking sound? Yeah, yes, sir. The trash can beside me, it's ticking. Sir. Do you remember when I showed you the replica of the alarm clock wired to a bundle of... CNT. Someone set a bloody bomb. A bomb? George, don't move. Don't move. It could be rigged to the bench. Oh, good Lord. Julia. Get away from the trash can. Right now. I'm terribly sorry, George. <laughs> Don't mention it. This is how Stratford's trying to kill Chaplin without being here in person. So what do we do, Murdoch? I'll have to try to defuse it. And what if it goes off before you can? Then George won't die alone. George? wires are crossed. It's harmless. So it isn't going to go off? Not unless someone were to rewire it. The explosive isn't even attached to the alarm clock. So the killer has botched another attempt on Chaplin's life, but in clever enough a way that we couldn't catch him. Unless it was never meant to go off in the first place. It's my flatulent sack. Ed Ward. He's used his flatulent sacks to hold this bomb together. Why was Ed Ward trying to kill Charlie Chaplin? He wasn't. Ward didn't get the room number wrong, but he thought someone else was going to be in that room. Until he demanded a suite that was Obie Stratford's room. <laughs> After killing McCloskey, he saw another chance. When he sliced that rope, he wasn't trying to hit Charlie Chaplin, but the man standing beside him. But sir, the stage trap door that was sabotaged to harm Chaplin. George, Charlie Chaplin was never supposed to be on stage. Obi Stratford isn't the killer. Obi Stratford has been the intended target all along. Sir! Sir! The 
the midway. What? We have to get to the midway. Stay out the way. The midway! George, George! The midway, Julia! What? What? Obi Stratford is in danger. I need you to detain Ed Ward. Who? Ed Ward. Edward? Yes. E Edward who? This isn't a joke, Watts. What's funny about Edward? Nothing, nothing. The prop man. I need you to arrest him, but don't let him know that you're onto him. Otherwise, he's likely to pull that ladder right out from under Stratford. I'm supposed to arrest him without him knowing he's being arrested? Exactly. And what's his surname? No! Oh. Wait, I'm coming. Uh, uh. What are you doing? Stop shaking this ladder, you Stop it. Stop it. Stop. Can you not find a murderer? This whole town smells like a hog. You're welcome. Well, that's something. Oh, you're under arrest. <laughs> I was trying to kill O.B. Stratford all along. Of course I was. You wanted his job. I deserved it. You purchased your entire act. So? He promised it to me. Kept saying he was going to retire. The show would be mine. You killed a man and nearly killed several others just to advance your career. My career? <laughs> it wasn't just for my career. It was for the people. He's not even funny. What are you doing here? Impressing upon you that my company is worth keeping. And you're doing that by showing off your wealth. Well, you already know how attractive I am. You've never had to work for a thing in your life, have you? No. Does it matter? No. Yep. Constable? That costume you were wearing, is there any chance I could purchase it from you? 
Mr. Chaplin, those items were designed to be used in the solving of a murder. I don't see what other applications they could have. Yeah, and they were very uncomfortable. I felt like a, a penguin trying to balance an anvil on my head. Well, I'll have to make my own, then. Charlie! Charlie, I have it! I have it. <gasps> what is it? A film. I sent Stan to see those film men that were set up on the Midway. They captured the whole arrest. What on earth would you want that for? Oh, I planned to study it. George's costume was marvelous, but this man at the center of everything, stoic in the face of chaos. <laughs> He's the funniest man in the world. Him? Oh, yes. Oh, this, this is going to be big. <laughs> oh. Well, well, well. William Murdoch, the funniest man in the world. How about that? <laughs> That's wonderful. I can hardly stand the thought of you spending one more night here. Me neither. Although the warden has extended an olive branch in light of my wrongful imprisonment, he's invited me to a family dinner. Oh. <laughs> Dinner will be served shortly. And you've lived behind these prison walls with your mother and father your whole life. I have. That's quite something. I suppose I'm just a bird in a gilded cage. <laughs> oh, I meant to say thank you again for letting me use this dress for the evening. It's fine. I don't wear it anymore. So, your mother tells me that you're engaged. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, that must be him now. Oh, apologies for my lateness, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie Garland. Julia Ogden. What a surprise to see you here. Yes, what a surprise. You two know each other. Yes. Julia used to be my sister-in-law. That is, before my brother was murdered and she very hastily remarried. Hmm? Um, Dr. Ogden is an inmate at the prison now. You don't say. Well, you're certainly not dressed like one. I was accused of a crime which I didn't commit, and I've been exonerated. I simply need to meet with the judge in the morning. Not much seems to stick to you, I guess. Oh, is Dr. Ogden the woman who caused you to leave the Crown Attorney's office? Oh, come now. It's all water under the bridge. I'm an estate lawyer now. Left the sordid world of crime behind. Look, Julia, I know our paths have diverged somewhat, but I can assure you there's no hard feelings on my end. Hmm? Darling? Thank you, Jane. I'll have to read your book, Dr. Ogden. Hmm. You've written a book, have you? Yes, with my husband, William. I'm thinking of writing one myself on prison reform. Joseph has set up gardens for the inmates and a library. They do have a calming effect. Of course, the strongest deterrent to recidivism is corporal punishment. To be frank, I don't believe that corporal punishment is ever appropriate. Well, considering you're an inmate, I can see why you hold that opinion. More peas. Oh, damn. I've spilled mustard on my jacket. You put too much on your beef. You always do. Lauren, your jewelry is stunning. Thank you. I inherited some of my grandmother's. May I ask about your locket? It seems to be broken. I know. <laughs> Silly, really, that I keep wearing it, but it has sentimental value. Sarah, you shouldn't have brought that drink to Mr. Hymas. He asked for it, ma'am. I don't know why you don't listen to me, Joseph. Ice is bad for the Constitution. Wouldn't you agree, Dr. Ogden? Well, I actually have never heard that theory. Mother believes all drinks should be tepid. <clears throat> oh, sorry. I'm sure you're all right, sir. It's just the beef is poorly cooked. 
as usual. <laughs> Hence the need to disguise it with mustard. <clears throat> ah, Jane. Here. Get this stain out for me, would you? Everyone, we will reconvene in the drawing room in a quarter of an hour. I'll bring up some Imperial Tokay from the cellar. Until then, I will be resting in my room. As will I. Please feel free to make yourself comfortable in the drawing room. There's more wine in there. You seem to be enjoying it. <clears throat> Mind if I smoke? Mm, I've never cared for cigar smoke, actually. Mm. No bother. Over time, you'll hardly notice it. I was just with Joseph in his study. He's got some wonderful cigars. Is everyone coming soon? I've just done this baked Alaska, and it doesn't last long. That looks heavenly, Sarah. What were you in prison for? Stealing the soul of a great chef? <laughs> the beef aside, of course. I think I'll go find Mr. Hymas. I'm looking forward to that toke. Well, while you're up, see if you can't find my fiance. Hmm? Oh, and tell her to hurry. This dessert will not take long to melt. Mr. Hymas? Dear God! Dr. Ogden? What's happened? I just found him like this. <gasps> Is he dead? What's all this? Dear God. Uh, Jane, telephone the police I immediately. Leslie? Joseph! Joseph! Mother! Oh, God. Oh, oh, what's going on? Your father's been stabbed. How? Is that possible? I locked both of the doors before dinner. All of the windows are locked. No one could have gotten in from outside. What if that's true? It means one of us is a murderer. <laughs> What were you doing here? I came looking for your father, and I found him lying here. Why were you hovering over him? I was checking to see if he was alive. Julia, step away from the body. I will not. The sooner I examine him, the better chance we'll have of knowing what happened. Well, the better chance you'll have of disguising what you did. Oh, Lauren, why would Dr. Ogden kill your father? Maybe Lauren is right. Julia, step away. Oh, for goodness sake. The police said they won't be here for hours. They're not coming immediately? Oh, these wretched police. Everyone. Where were you right before Dr. Ogden discovered Mr. Hymas? I was resting in my room, as was I. I was cleaning Mr. Hymas' jacket. I got all the mustard off. I can show you. And I was browning the meringue on the baked Alaska. And where were you, Mr. Garland, before you came into the drawing room and spoke to me? I told you I was with Joseph in the study, and I remained there when he stepped out. Poor man. Oh, well, that's everyone accounted for, then. <gasps> oh, God, mother! What is that dreadful woman doing? <laughs> I'm taking this to the kitchen. I need cocoa and a paintbrush. So everyone has their own different... Finger marks, yes. The oils naturally present in the human hand leave the trace of a unique pattern. Amazing. I can see some clear finger marks. Well, now what? We'll lock this in the cupboard, and then I'll take everyone's finger marks to compare. I'll need an ink pot, a cloth, and several cards. <laughs> I love this song. It's one of my favorites. So, how are you settling into university life? It's hard. Not everyone's welcoming. But in here, well, it's better. All my fraternity brothers already feel like, well, brothers. All right, all right. Pack it up, everyone. Pack it up. Gentlemen, what's the trouble? This hall's been booked already by Theta Gamma Delta, so... Uh... Clear out. We booked this hall with the dean. Isn't that right? Well... He unbooked it. The party's over, fellas. You don't tell me what to do. Carol fainted outside. He needs help. Let's go. Please let us through. We have a medical examiner here. He 
He's dead. I saw him just before he fell to the ground. He was walking, then he started coughing like he was choking. Was he alone? Yes. It was like he suddenly couldn't breathe. I waved at him, tried to ask him what was wrong, but he couldn't speak. Something was constricting his windpipe. This doesn't sound right. Run to a call box. Telephone station house number four. Ask for Detective Murdoch. Yes, ma'am. What do you think, Violet? Well, I see some watery blood on his collar. Still wet. He coughed it up before he died? This doesn't just happen to a healthy young man. Staying late this evening, sir. Yes, Margaret's sister is visiting. She could not only talk for England, but the whole of the bloody British Isles. Ah, yes, you've mentioned her. Mm. I'm glad it worked out for Julia. She comes home tomorrow, right? Yes, and I plan to spoil her. <laughs> Got some new maths equations to look over? <laughs> no, biology. <laughs> no rest for the wicked, me old mucker. All right, that's everyone. Yes, everyone but you. Thank you, Mr. Garland. Jane, come here. Where is my gold clock? I don't know. It always sits on this shelf. Where has it gone? Honestly, I couldn't say. I, I can't remember when I saw it last. Are you sure it hasn't fallen into an apron pocket? Don't accuse me, I'm not a thief. No, you are an inmate of the prison. That should do it. Now that we have everyone's finger marks on these cards, we just need to compare it to those that were on the knife. Very good. Shall we? What have you, Miss Hart? Well, a young man named Harold Tandy. He collapsed at the university. He coughed up water mixed with blood right before he died. Well, what would cause that? It's too soon for me to speculate. Mr. Buchanan. Hello, Detective. Were there any witnesses? Just one uh, fraternity brother of mine. He said Harold was alone when he fell to the ground. Hmm. Uh, w was he someone you knew? Not well, but I know Harold's lady friend. Hmm. Well, perhaps she can inform us of his whereabouts earlier in the evening. You seem to have spilled a bit of paint on your... I was cleaning up when you called me about Harold. <laughs> I understand you were seeing Mr. Tandy. I told the detective that you two were together. Harold was always so cautious of telling anyone about us. Only a few people knew. When was the last time you saw him? Just this morning at the library. It... How did he seem? He was fine. Which is why what happened later was such a shock. And what was that? He put a letter in my mailbox, breaking it off with me. He said he never wanted to see me again. It didn't make sense. <laughs> I can't believe the knife is gone. Someone broke the lock. Indeed. And you were the last one seen with the knife. Mr. Garland, whatever enmity you still harbor against me, please let it go. This is neither the time nor the place. I don't know what you're talking about. What is that smell? It's, it's coming from the ice. It smells like mothballs. You're right. I think it's camphor. Why would there be camphor in the ice? Camphor is a poison. Didn't Mrs. Hymas say that every time the warden had a drink, he felt sick? Yes, and he was the only one who had drinks with ice. So who would usually make his drinks? That would have to be Sarah. Yes? Sarah, I've noticed something unusual about the ice. Sarah? Sarah! <sighs> Why were you poisoning the warden? Honestly, Dr. Ogden, I would never kill anyone. You are a convicted criminal, though. I served my time, and it wasn't for anything violent. I just wrote my boss's name on some checks, that's all. You laced the warden's eyes with camphor, Sarah. 
That's a serious offense. I knew it wouldn't kill him. Just make him bilious. The old coot deserved it. Well, why did you have such animosity toward him? Didn't you see what he does to inmates in that prison? Slogs them for the littlest thing. I've had friends left half dead from his beatings. Julia. What is it? Someone's burning these papers. Looks like someone's lists and inventories. I recognize the handwriting. These were written by Mr. Hymas. He was just throwing them out. I used them to get the fire lit. You didn't find the knife? No. Searched everywhere. Besides, the baked Alaska Sarah brought into the drawing room proves that she was in the kitchen when Mr. Hymas was killed. Meringue will burn in a heartbeat if you don't watch it every second. I never saw the warden. On my word. Well, I am loath to take the word of a criminal, but perhaps Mrs. Green is not the killer after all. What was Harold doing during the day? I think he was with Miss Harris. We know Mr. Tandy was with Miss Harris earlier, but what was he doing later in the day? Well, we was all at the house together. He was studying in the main room just before dinner. And then we all went to the hall for the dance. And why would Mr. Tandy be walking outside alone? Maybe he just needed some air. I don't know, Detective. Right. Thank you, gentlemen. That will be all. If I have any further questions, I'll let you know. These are my brothers. I don't think they're lying. You were with everyone at the fraternity house? I had two classes, then I took Miss Hart out for dinner before the dance. Mr. Tandy was new to Iota Delta Phi, yes? Yes. He's being initiated next week. Uh, I've heard that some of these fraternity initiations can be quite dangerous. Not these fellows. They were planning nothing more than making him drink rye while doing a handstand. Hardly what killed Mr. Tandy. But still, if you could ask around just to be sure he was where your fraternity brothers say he was. Sure thing. How well did you know the warden? Well enough. He was to be my father-in-law, after all. So who in this house would want to kill him? I have no idea. Sarah was very upset about her past experiences in prison with the warden. But Jane is a current inmate. For a violent offense? Well, Lauren says it was self-defense. Are Jane and Lauren friends? Yes. Apparently, the warden was constantly shouting at Jane how she had scorched his shirts or not waxed the floors properly, etc. He could be a real tyrant when he wanted to be. And yet she kept working for him. Well, I imagine it's preferable to being held behind bars. Wouldn't you say, Julia? Perhaps she'd grown tired of his abuse. I think a conversation with Jane may be in order. I already told you I was cleaning the warden's jacket. Yes, but there was approximately 10 minutes between the end of dinner and when Mr. Hymas was killed. And I was all the way at the back of the house, at the wash tub. I understand you and the warden had a contentious relationship. Relationship. That man treated me like dirt. End of story. Were you fed up? Did he push you too far and you finally snapped? It never got that bad. Lauren always stuck up for me. Besides, do you really think I would do anything that would keep me in prison longer than I have to be? I've seen people do all manner of things when they get desperate. Well, I didn't hate him as much as some here. Oh? You know what I mean? Mrs. Hymas and the warden? She hated him. She was always yelling at him. If there's anyone here who's glad he's dead, it's her. We did have our disagreements. Well, Jane told us that you were constantly angry at Mr. Hymas. 
My husband gave me a beautiful home and everything I could have asked for. I'm happy, or I was. Forgive me for saying this, Mrs. Hymas, but I got the impression that you weren't. I'll admit, living inside the enclosure of prison walls is a strain. Lauren told me you never went near the prison. In fact, you hardly leave the house at all. Why would I? To speak with oafish guards? To teach degenerate prisoners cross-stitch? You don't like it here. Who would? I hate living as we do. And my husband was the most intransigent man on earth. But I cleave to my husband, as the Bible says. I am a good woman. Come now, Mrs. Hyman. Leslie, stop. Could you leave us for a moment? I would like to speak with Dr. Ogden privately. Very well. Please. It was Leslie. What? Joseph hated him. But Leslie told me your husband couldn't wait for the wedding. <laughs> He would. I'll wager Leslie also told you that he was very successful. Both lies. So Mr. Hymas was against the marriage? They fought only a few nights ago. Joseph told him that if he didn't get his life together, he would see to it that the marriage was off. But is Leslie really that attached to Lauren? Enough to cause your husband harm? No, I don't believe they are love's young dream. But... Joseph was planning on giving Leslie a sizable dowry. Any findings yet, Miss Hart? He has scratches on the top of his forehead and his left ear, deep enough to draw blood. Hmm. These wounds are recent? They appear to have been made within the last 24 hours. Any idea what may have caused those? Hard to say. You mentioned that he coughed up watery blood before he died. Indeed. The only time I've seen that is in a drowning victim. But this man was walking on dry land. Come now, Julia. You really are stretching things. Joseph loved me like a son. You may be alone in that opinion. Well, what does it matter anyway? Hmm? You know I didn't do this. I know no such thing. Well, I do. As I told you, after dinner, I went to the water closet, and then I went to Joseph's study, and I... What? <laughs> the cellar door. What about it? It's always kept shut. Mr. Hymas is the only one allowed to go down there. And? Well, uh, after dinner, I noticed the cellar door was ajar. And so, naturally, when I saw Joseph in the study, I asked him if he'd already gotten the toquet. But he said no, that he hadn't gone down to the cellar yet. Well, it's late enough that Margaret's sister should be in bed now. That's my excuse. How come you're burning the midnight oil? Well, the nanny assures me that Susanna has gone to sleep, so I thought I would continue to work until Julia returns home. Oh, Mr. Buchanan. What brings you to our station house? Uh, nothing good, I'm afraid. I'm assisting the detective. Oh? Mr. Buchanan was present when a man died at the university. We suspect foul play. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear about that. I'll leave you to it. Good evening, gentlemen. I've learned that all my fraternity brothers went swimming at the pool before the dance. So they lied. What were they hiding? Well, they weren't supposed to be there. It's against university policy. I'll give you three guesses as to why. I understand. Was Mr. Tandy with them? Yes. And there's something else that's it's probably nothing. Uh, Please. On my way here, someone stopped me to ask about Harold. They said they saw the Iota Delta Phi brothers leave the pool. And was Mr. Tandy with them? They saw a group of Iota Delta Phi leave, but Nathaniel and Harold weren't with them. So Mr. Woodson, the only witness to Mr. Tandy's death out on the street, was also with him alone at the pool just prior. What exactly are we looking for? Anything out of the ordinary? A button, a brooch? Cigar ash? Cigar ash? I don't like what you're implying, Julia. Did you turn out the lights, Miss Garland? 
What are you doing, Mr. Garland? Stay away from me. Dodgy wiring, I guess. Real pity about the wine, though. Yeah, let's keep looking. Mm. Dear God. What is it? 1892 Chateau Latour. The old man had been holding out on me. Oh, for goodness sake. Mrs. Hi, Mrs. Shaw. She had this on at dinner. What would she be doing down here? She never touched a drop. There's blood all over it. I don't think she was down here for the wine. Mrs. Hyam has killed her husband. I don't know what you mean. Joseph hates it when anyone comes down here except for himself. Don't lie to us, Mrs. Hymas. How dare you! Mrs. Hymas, we know you are in the cellar tonight. Fine. Yes. I come down here to drink. It dulls my pain. I hate this house. And I hated Joseph. He was a tyrant. But I didn't kill him. Then how do you explain this? What is this? It's your shawl, Mrs. Hymas, with your husband's blood all over it. But that can't be. I, I wore my shawl with the fringe tonight at dinner. This is my other shawl. Yes, but this shawl still belongs to you, doesn't it? How did it end up down here, bloodied? I don't know. I'll admit, I did come down here for a drink after dinner. I heard Joseph and I hid. When I went up the stairs, I heard a noise. And I found him on the floor, dead. And did you see anyone else? No. And I knew instantly that if I cried out, it would look like I stabbed him. So I stepped over the body, and I went to my room. <sighs> Mrs. Hymas, I'm afraid to say, this evidence is very damning. Mr. Woodson, you were the last person seen with Mr. Tandy. Yes, I've already told you. So I'm cough and then collapse on the sidewalk. What happened at the pool? You both know about that? Nothing. Took a while to get changed, and Harold waited for me. There was no sort of altercation between the two of you at the pool? No. Harold didn't even go swimming. He said he didn't feel well. I went back to the house to get dressed for the dance, and the next time I saw Harold, he was on the street. Mrs. Hart should have her post-mortem completed. I'd like to hear her findings before we proceed. Detective. I didn't hurt Harold. It's my friend. Harold Tandy did not drown in a pool. Are you sure? Have a look at this. A boat. A pond beetle. I found it in his lungs along with some algae. Harold Tandy drowned in a pond, not a pool. But that still doesn't explain how he was up and about walking when he died. I think I can explain it. Dry drowning. That sounds impossible. A person can nearly drown but survive. However, their lungs have collected water, which later causes pulmonary edema. So Mr. Tandy was in a pond yesterday? Yesterday or the day before. I've read of cases that took two days to become fatal. Well, that certainly widens the window of opportunity. Thank you, Miss Hart. One more thing. I found traces of green paint on the victim, inside his ear. We met someone else marked with green paint today. We really should cover him up, Julie. It's gruesome. This is a criminal investigation, Mr. Garland. Now look at this. Ugh, do I have to? The blood on his collar is still quite red and fresh. And? Just look at the blood on this shawl. 
Sounds dry and stiff. I should have seen it before. It's not his blood. Someone placed this there earlier. So someone manufactured evidence against Mrs. Hines? Lauren found it. This is too much. Lauren, what is it? I felt something poking me when I sat down. It was under the cushion. Did you touch it? No. Your handkerchief. Uh, right. We need the finger marks on it. Well, who put it there? The murderer, presumably. And who is that? It's a tented arch. That's impossible. Well, who do they belong to? Me. You killed my father? This must be the knife I used at dinner. It's not the murder weapon. We have to keep looking. Please, Julia. Leslie! I think it's best if you sat down. What are you doing? This is ridiculous. What interest would I have in killing the warden? I'm about to be released tomorrow morning. I have no idea why you would do it. But you have blamed everyone in this household except yourself. I wouldn't put anything past her. She's responsible for the death of my beloved brother. What? Your first husband, remember? Leslie Garland is trying to frame me for this murder, and I can explain to you all why. Green paint on Harold? Are you sure? You had green paint on your sleeve earlier. It was just a silly sorority thing. You must admit, it's quite a coincidence, Miss Harris. Penny, please help us. We use it in our initiations. We paint all the new girls' faces green. Do any other groups use green paint? My sorority is the sister to Theta Gamma Delta. They paint new brothers green, too. Why would Leslie frame you? It fits in with his previous behavior. Leslie Garland blames me for his brother's death. So for some time, he made my life hell. What did he do? He posed as a sequential killer who was after my husband. He tried to keep us apart. He terrorized me. I sent some letters, Julia. I was angry. He ruined my life. He cost me my job at the Crown Attorney's office. That's the least that you deserved. You're pathetic. My brother would still be alive if it weren't for you. <laughs> Look, his cuff. There's something brown on your shirt, Leslie. It looks like cocoa. Why would you have cocoa on your sleeve? He took Dr. Ogden's knife from the dinner table, and he dusted it with cocoa. Look, how did he get the knife bloody? Oh, Mr. Garland, you didn't. You don't understand. None of you do. This woman is, is evil. You framed Dr. Ogden. Leslie, it was you. You killed my father. Leslie, how could you? What are you saying? Of, of course I didn't do it. Did you kill the warden just to frame me? No, wait a minute. This is getting out of hand. Everybody out. I need to speak with Dr. Ogden uh, alone. Will you murder her too? Please. It's all right. I can defend myself if it comes to that. Let's go, everyone. Apparently, these two have some unfinished business to discuss. All right, we're alone. What is it you have to say to me? I'm sorry. You admit it? Look, Julia, I have no idea whose finger marks are on the murder weapon, all right? But I saw one last chance to get my revenge for what you did, and I took it. For what I did? I didn't kill Darcy. But he'd still be alive if he'd never met you. Don't you think it's time you let this go? You're right. This anger towards you has been eating me from the inside out. I hate not being a crown attorney anymore. Running to a state lab is just so boring. Well, perhaps this could be a fresh start for you. You could find a career that is truly fulfilling. I fear marrying Lauren is a mistake, too. My life's such a mess. Leslie. It's 
it's not too late. You're right. What are you doing? I, I thought that's what you wanted. You really are a pissant. How does Theta Gamma Delta haze their initiates? That's a secret. This is a murder investigation, gentlemen. We don't have time for secrets. Murder? He had a heart attack or something. It had nothing to do with us. Please answer the question. We paint him green and we make him swim ten laps. In a pond. Grenadier Pond. Why? Okay. <laughs> I'm leaving. I don't have to listen to any more of this. What? Let's go. Wait, Chick, Chick Let's go. this is serious. The detective needs to talk to everyone. Don't touch me. Am I under arrest? You just might be. I can explain. There's nothing to explain. You took my gold clock. It was in the dining room, and I've just found it in the kitchen cupboard. But I didn't steal it. Then how did it come to be in your possession? Warren. Did he confess? Is he guilty? I'm not sure. Lauren, you cannot marry that man. He's horrible. Sarah, it's none of your business. Are you saying that Leslie's guilty? Perhaps it was you. Oh, don't turn on me. It's your mother who hates him so much. I don't know who you think you are. That's enough. Everyone be quiet. Mrs. Hymas, where did your husband keep his outgoing mail? In a tray by the front hall for the mailman to pick up. I'd like all of you to move into the drawing room. I'll join you there in five minutes. Harold Tandy was initiated into Theta Gamma Delta, and it killed him. Detective, are you aware that Chick is Miss Harris's brother? Well, that is most interesting. Because Miss Harris, your sister, told us that Mr. Tandy wrote her a most uncharacteristic letter after they last saw one another, breaking off their relationship. Did you make him do that? How would I make him write a letter? By showing him that you'd kill him if he didn't. You pretended to initiate him to gain his trust, and then held him underwater. You scratched his head with your ring. All right. I had a little fun. But I just scared him so that he'd stay away from my sister. Yeah, Chick wasn't anywhere near Harold when he died. His actions killed him. It's called a dry drowning. And it was at your hand, Mr. Harris. I suppose we'll have to see how much jail time a judge and jury feel you deserve. Please, sit. Mrs. Hymas, I don't believe that Sarah stole your gold clock. Thank you, Dr. Ogden. I believe that Lauren gave it to her in exchange for a favor. What do you mean? I'd like to draw everyone's attention to this. These old letters of the wardens were found in the stove in Sarah's room. I told you I used them as kindling. Did you? Or were they examples of the warden's handwriting used to forge a letter? What letter? I found this in the outgoing mail tray. It's a letter to the head of Port Credit Prison stating that Jane March is pardoned fully and completely effective immediately. I don't know anything about that. But why would Lauren ask Sarah to forge a pardon letter for Jane? Jane, I've noticed that all evening you've been reaching into your apron pocket. Please show us what you have in there. No. You can't make me. You will do as Dr. Ogden says right now. The other half of Lauren's locket. Lauren and Jane were planning to run away together. But Lauren, you told me you loved me. I can't believe this. Hold your outrage, Mr. Garland. Oh, please, you can't possibly believe that I knew anything about this. Earlier, when I was searching for the real murder weapon, I was just about to look in this sideboard when you stopped me at gunpoint. The knife! 
I'm not a betting woman, but I'd wager if I compared everyone's finger marks against those on this knife, they'd match Lauren Hymas's. You were just supposed to get me pardoned. My father would have found out and ruined everything. This way, we could have our freedom and my inheritance. It would have been perfect. That must be the police. Well, they took their sweet time, didn't they? Why is Jane being arrested? She didn't know of my plan. Jane's sentence will be lighter, but she's still part of this crime. Lauren, was everything we had a lie? Yes, Leslie, you repulsed me. It's rather harsh. I had thought you were the only way out of here. And then I met Jane. Well, Julia, although our night together did have a grisly catalyst, I must admit I did rather enjoy our time playing detective. No hard feelings. Mr. Garland, you tried to frame me for murder. Well. Did you find the murder weapon in Lauren's bedroom? Yes, along with a packed bag. I thought Lauren killed her father for his inheritance and kept a bag close by in case she was looking suspicious, but... Well, I thought she did it for us. So you knew that Lauren killed her father, but you did nothing? She was my fiance. Officers, take this man into custody as well. What? Are you trying to ruin my life again? You did that yourself. You'd best watch your back, Julia Ogden. I'll see to it you pay for this. Don't keep the officers waiting. Violet, I wasn't expecting to see you. I wanted to surprise you. We were up all night. I thought you'd take the day off and sleep in. Oh, I couldn't sleep. <laughs> Neither could you, it seems. I didn't want to miss a class. Oh. Well, how about an early dinner? That sounds perfect. Good. But Violet, do you think we can get to a single day without some calamity? Um, we'll see. <laughs> There's never a dull moment around you. Isn't that why you like me? Hmm. It's not the only reason. Hmm. I'm just glad she's too young to remember that her mother was imprisoned. <laughs> she missed you. I missed you both so much. I'm so glad to be home. What else can I get you? I'll make you anything your heart desires. Honestly, I'm not fussy. As long as it's not steak, cocoa, uh, baked Alaska, or imperial toke. Right, what is toke? What? Well, it's a Hungarian... Uh... It, it doesn't matter. <sighs> Were you really up all night solving the warden's murder? the kettle on and come back and I'll tell you the whole story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in the country. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to enjoy it. I thought you were here to teach. Well, my classes won't take up that much time and you'll be busy. Oh, yes. I can't wait to see the long distance transmission lines from Niagara Falls installed. Mayor Hahn will even be there. <laughs> I'll make sure to write down everything in detail so you can read it to Susanna as a bedtime story. Oh, do you think she... That was a joke. <laughs> Very funny. Oh. <laughs> With Crabtree on his honeymoon, Murdoch on vacation and what's gone, this place is as quiet as a church. I wish I was paid enough to afford a vacation. Hey, what was that? Nothing, sir. Right, I'm off. Higgins, you're in charge. And I never thought I'd hear myself say that. <laughs> women treating women offers great benefit, particularly in childbirth. However, it's important to know when to seek medical attention for the mother or the child. One 
Possible scenario. Please. Oh, my God. Please. Help him. Put him on the table. Careful with his head. He's bleeding badly. You all right? Can you hear me? Can you tell me your name? What happened to him? I, I found her. Gone. Posterior blunt force trauma. It's a hit from behind. It's a deep laceration, likely caused by something heavy and very sharp. The edge of a rock, perhaps? Without a full post mortem, I couldn't say for sure. And what do you have there? It's a letter addressed to Enoch Snyder. From an Otto Fanschmidt in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I'm guessing this is Enoch Snyder? You say he was brought in? Carried in by a young man who ran off before I could talk to him. That was Mervyn Friesen. He and his family come into Berlin every weekend. And what about Enoch Snyder? Do you know him? I've never seen him before. Do you know where we can find Mr. Friesen? The Friesen colony is just up the road. Colony? They're Mennonite. Oh. Excuse me, I wonder if you could... Excuse me? Could you tell me where I could find Pardon a murder? Pardon me, sir. Reason? A quick question. Oh. Oh. Hello. Hello. Ah, is that for me? Yeah. It's beautiful. Edna. Go back to your mother. Can I help you? We're looking for a Mervyn Friesen. He's my son. Who are you? I'm William Murdoch. This is my wife, Dr. Julia Ogden. Your son brought an injured man into the Berlin Clinic this morning. He ran off before I was able to ask him what happened. He was scared. He said it was the Snyder boy. How is he? I'm afraid he didn't make it. Lord in heaven. No. Can you help us? Come with me. Mr. Snyder's death does raise some suspicions. How well did you know him? Um, not well. We were the same age, but he belonged to the other colony. I only met him because he was thinking of joining us. There's another colony? Over the way. Why was he thinking of leaving his colony? Uncle Jebediah is an old order Mennonite. His rules are more stringent than those we live by. Your uncle heads the other colony? Yes. My brother. But that is a long story, and we are short of time. Enoch was a fine young man. Quiet, friendly. We found a letter on him from an Otto Fanschmidt in Pennsylvania. Does that name seem familiar to you? We still have family there, but I don't know an Otto. What did the letter say? I'm sorry I know not of whom you speak. The last thing he said before he died was, I found her. Does that mean anything to you? No. Not at all. Where did you find Mr. Snyder? Uh, it was beside the road. I was driving her buggy into town, and I saw his hat on the ground. I stopped to retrieve it, and I found him lying just a few steps away. Can you show us where you found him? He was laying right over here. The ground is soft here. His injuries couldn't have been caused by a fall on this terrain. What's the matter? Mr. Snyder was struck in the back of the head, something hard, perhaps a rock, possibly with deliberate intent. Then it was an outsider. Men and knights do not commit murder, Mr. Murdoch. It is not in our nature. Well, sir. 
In some ways, this has been the best thing to happen to me. I wouldn't go that far. The food can't be up to much. I've been saved. What's that, Bobby? I'd like to be called Robert now. You've been saved? Saved from what? I've entered the Catholic Church. Absolutely not! It's one thing for my best detective to be a Catholic, but no Brackenreed is going to become a bloody papist! I'm not becoming a Catholic, Father. I am one. You believe he was murdered? By whom? We don't yet know. The answer may, however, lie in his colony. You will continue to run into walls of silence, worse there than here. We Mennonites are mistrustful of outsiders. You know people there, though. Your brother? I don't know him anymore. There is a rift between us. I left there long ago because I wanted to marry a woman who was not from the community. Jebediah shunned me. It was like a death. We pass one another in Berlin like strangers. If he can treat his own brother like that, the two of you have little hope. That's what Enoch was running away from. There must be a way to gain his trust. A young man's life was cut short far too soon. Solving this crime may give his family some peace. Jebediah does take in borders. Mennonites, of course. Meaning what? Is everything all right up there? Uh. Hello, Ermgard and Cornelius Penner. Oh, I forgot to mention, no jewelry. Oh. Except, Except for, for the, the beard, beard yes. Upon arrival, say Birkin Falk sent you. Jebediah knows and trusts him. The colony is similar to ours, but with even fewer trappings of the modern world. Where do we start? Meet them where they are, Julia. Talk to the women there. They will know things the men never hear. Mind. The men will not communicate directly with a woman who is not their wife. Right. Yes. Well, shall we, Cornelius? Yes, Irma. Ermgard. Ermgard. Is this the Friesen home? Yes. We are Cornelius and Ermgard Penner. We are passing through on our way to do missionary work. We need a place to rest our head a few days yet. From where do you hail? Mannheim. You come all this way. We are travelers in need of hospitality. Why are you asking for me? Birkin Falk said there was no one more generous and charitable than Jebediah Friesen. Surely the Lord said of Birkin, well done, our good and faithful servant. The Lord also said, you have been faithful over a little. I will make you ruler over many things. Marta said two places for our new friends. You will join us for lunch. I hope you don't mind that I need a hand in the kitchen. Of course. This one slows me down, and we're busy preparing for a funeral. Follow me. I'm sorry to hear of the funeral. As are we. Working on a farm is rough and sometimes dangerous work. Though we come from dust, and to dust we shall return. It is hard to lose someone so young. 
Yes. What was the young man's name? Did we say the funeral was for a man? Oh. Uh, hard, dangerous work on the farm was mentioned. I, I only assumed. Hmm. Of course. How old was he? Enoch was not yet 20 and about to start a life with our daughter. They were to be married. It is as if we've lost one of our own. I'm very sorry for your loss. <clears throat> More hands make for shorter work, Ermgard. I hope you can help repair the FASPA for the funeral service. Oh, yes, I'd be happy to help with the FASPA. Where should I begin? Come, I'll get you an apron. There is a vacant farmhouse nearby where you can stay. Thank you. Marta will send your wife over with goat's milk, apple butter, and bread for tomorrow is breakfast. This is very generous in these trying times. The Lord does not give us more than we can bear. How much do I owe you for these lodgings? You will repay with the strength of your back and the sweat of your brow. I know I should not say this, but I do love having all the women together, working shoulder to shoulder. You're right, Marta. You should hold your tongue. It's almost sinful to rejoice in funeral work. Sinful? No. Finding community in the company of women, where we can be ourselves, it's natural. You've been needing for a while now, but your dough is hardly holding together. Haven't you made biscuits before? Oh. oh, oh, no. I mean, I'm so sorry. I'm so clumsy. Uh, should I find a tea towel? Oh, no, not that one. Uh, you know, Ermgard, let's get out of this hot kitchen for a spell. I see we don't have any Zwiebach for the fast bun. That will not do. Come, let us to the bakery. Uh, you'll take care of that, yes, Ruth? Is it my fault? Is what your fault? Anglican. United. Episcopalian. Oh. I'd even be fine with Lutheran, but Roman Catholic, Margaret. What does it matter? Truly, he has faith. If I didn't know better, I'd think the lad wanted to send me to an early grave. Oh, oh and he wants to be called Robert now. Did I mention that? Yes, dear, a few times. The faith, I don't mind. It's the mackerel snapper I can live without. Hello, Inspector Brackenreed? All oh, right. Yes. Thank you. <sighs> Speak of the devil. What's wrong? Bobby's parole hearing has been moved up to this week. This week? I didn't think he was getting a hearing for another year. Apparently, he's a model prisoner, and his good behavior hasn't escaped notice. Bobby's prayers have been answered. I suppose they have. Oh! Thomas! He's coming home. Our boy's coming home, and we're going to be a family again. <laughs> oh, uh, thank you. Good to get the blood pumping, especially after such a long trip from Pennsylvania. Usually Enoch would do it. You were right, it was as if you were heaven sent. Must be difficult now without him. I imagine he was a big help here on the farm. Truthfully, he wasn't built for hard labor. Oh? He was uh, a daydreamer. And frail, like his mother and father. God rest their souls. But, oh, what a sharp mind he had. It's a good match for my spirited Agnes. Very tragic to lose her betrothed, especially so close to the wedding. Mm. 
I'd like to offer her my condolences. She is not with us right now. She's visiting um, my cousin and his family in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Lancaster, you say? Yeah. I met a man from Lancaster once. Fan Schmidt. Don't recall his given name. Well, he would be one of ours then. My mother was a Fan Schmidt. Enoch didn't fit in with the other boys' his age. But he liked to talk to the baker ever since the man arrived. The baker's new to the colony. He is indeed. Oh, good Lord. How queer. Seems he closed shop early today. Must have run out. Agnes is in Pennsylvania? He said she was visiting his cousin's family in Lancaster. Perhaps that's who sent the letter to Enoch. I know not of whom you speak. Do you think there's a connection? There has to be. When I was in the kitchen with Marta, she stopped me opening a cupboard. It seemed like she was hiding something. Jebediah only spoke well of the boy. He seemed genuinely sad that he was gone. She described him as solitary. Said he only talked to Agnes and was quite close to the baker. He was new to the colony. Well, we should speak with him. You think he's a suspect? I don't know what to think. I hardly understand these people at all, Julia. I may have overdone it yesterday. Oh, so you don't want to relocate here after all? Surely you jest. <laughs> I don't know. You seem to fit right in here. They don't even have electricity. It's bordering on criminal. Oh, good. They're open. Mm. Morning. Hello? Yes? We'd like to ask you some questions about Mr. Snyder. We understand you knew him. Indeed, I did. The weather? Watts? What are you doing here? Just about to proof this sourdough, if you don't mind. Are you a Mennonite now? In a sense. I've not yet been baptized into their faith, but... These people have become my community, my family. They welcomed me when I was lost. Last we heard, you were in New York City. I had to leave. I wandered for a time and ended up back in Canada. I didn't want to return to Toronto and found myself doing odd jobs for farmers in this area. The Mennonites were always the kindest and most generous. I admired their peaceful lives, and so I befriended them. And moved here? Jebediah Friesen needed a man for physical labor. In exchange for the work, he gave me a place to stay. And you're their baker now. To bake bread is easy. The ingredients are simple. When I'm doing this work, the world is still. And you follow their rules and believe in their faith? I do. Well, forgive our surprise, but the Llewellyn Watts I came to know would have problems with the Mennonite faith. So, look, this is a place that prizes simplicity, honesty, and hard work. And what about love? Julia. <laughs> the world is full of cruelty and injustice. At least here I can see and believe in the goodness of people. Mm. Unfortunately, injustice is why we're here. I don't believe it. What happened to Enoch was an accident. The evidence suggests otherwise. 
these are peaceful people. No one here would harm anyone, let alone one of their own. Well, that may be true, but we have questions that remain unanswered. So you put on these clothes and taken false names? Something happened to that boy, what? We have to uncover the truth. By lying to a community of good people? I'm sure they are good people, but someone knows something. Help us, Watts. You were close to him, weren't you? We struck up a friendship. How did that come about? Outsiders can sense other outsiders. So he didn't fit in here? You could say that. Not all of the rules of this place fit with his life. He was uneasy about his upcoming marriage to Agnes Friesen. It was arranged by a matchmaker. He wasn't in love with her. Do you know Agnes? She was already visiting family when I arrived. How long ago was that? Four months. Maybe five. Watson, something is going on with Agnes Friesen. The family is hiding something. Friesen's have been nothing but welcoming and hospitable to me since I arrived. When did you last see Enoch Snyder? The morning before he died. How did he seem? Well, he was arguing with a woman, Sadie Yotzi. Who's that? Some, not I, would describe her as the colony busybody. She's a kind woman. She couldn't have anything to do with a murder. Well, she might know something. Perhaps whatever they were arguing about has something to do with why he's dead. How would we find her? Presumably, she'll be preparing for the fast bow with the other women. If you don't mind, I have work to do. I'll keep your secret for now, but finish your business here and go. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Are you Mrs. Yutzi? I am. I was told to ask you where to put the plots. Were you? Well, the, the food is being brought downstairs, dude. You're the one staying here with your husband, are you? Yes, we're staying with the Friesens. They've been so kind. Did you know Mr. Snyder well? Yes. Do you have any sense of what happened to him? No one does. Just sad that his last hours were spent in strife. Oh. He was having a row with Jebediah that morning. I tried to speak to him about it, but he was such a private boy. I mean, it was clear he was in distress. About what? Well, he wouldn't tell me. All I know is I heard Enoch saying, what have you done? Do you know what he was referring to? No, but if I was to guess, <clears throat> it must have had something to do with the wedding. To Jebediah's daughter? Of course. Oh, oh, yes, that's good. What have you done? That's what Mrs. Yutzi said. I hate to say it, but Jebediah has to be a suspect in this murder. Why? Because Enoch didn't want to marry his daughter? Or because Enoch discovered Jebediah did something to her? You can't think. She hasn't been seen in months. Enoch's dying words were, I found her. You think it could have been Agnes he met? Perhaps. And perhaps that's what got him killed. Well, if that's the case, we're missing a rather large piece of the puzzle. We need to search the Friesen home. There's something behind that cupboard door. The entire colony will be attending the funeral. Our absence would be noted. Could be our chance. We've learned that Enoch Snyder had a public disagreement with Jebediah just before his death. And what do you make of that? We believe it has something to do with his daughter. We're going to search Jebediah's home during the service for evidence. We need you to occupy him should he become aware that we have stepped away. Absolutely not. We need your help, Watts. I want no part of this. Don't you want to know what's happened to Enoch? Not like this. I'm not a detective anymore. You still know right from wrong. I do. And I know the people here are good people. I'm the last person to judge anyone's faith. But you said yourself you are tired of injustice. Someone here is lying. There is an injustice that is being covered up. You can't know that. Oh? Then why is Enoch Snyder dead? 
What are you saying? That Jebediah killed him? I don't know. No, you don't. And you don't know these people. Watts, no community is a monolith. I, I can see why you admire them, why you admire their faith. But someone is lying and someone is hiding something. Don't you want to expose the truth? That's not who I am anymore. You're still the same person, Watts. You can't deny who you are. I've denied who I am every day of my life. It's no different here than anywhere else. Oh, you are hiding here, Watts. Hiding from the truth of who you are and the truth of what it is that you want. The only way out of darkness is to bring the truth to light. Funeral's about to start. Be prepared for anything that they throw at you. I am prepared, Father. And if you tell them what they want to hear, you'll be out of prison in no time. I will tell them the truth. Of course. The result rests in God's hands. And the result will be good if you tell them what they want to hear. I'm not going to lie anymore, Father. Who said anything about lying? I'm going to tell them about Gerard LaCroix. That it was an accident, like you said at trial. It wasn't an accident. What are you saying? We fought, as I've said before. But in that final moment, I wanted him dead. I meant to kill him. No, you didn't. My heart knows the truth. I've already confessed in the eyes of God, and I will not lie again. You do that, they'll never let you out of here. You might never get parole. And if I lie, I betray God's forgiveness. If staying here is God's will, so be it. You'll break your mother's heart. Is that what you want, Robert? This isn't about want, Father. Confession requires sacrifice. Then sacrifice for her. She wants you home. She'll understand. I'm sorry. Someone doesn't want it being discovered. Julia? You're not staying for the rest of the service? I have a pressing matter to attend to. I'd like a moment of your time. This funeral has given me a newfound sense of clarity. Walk with me. Very grateful to be a part of this community and very much want to stay. We are lucky to have you. You're one of us. All that is left is for you to be baptized. What if I cannot ascribe to all tenets of the faith? What do you mean? Even if I'm ready to accept God, he may not be ready to accept me. You are a child of God made in his image. He loves and accepts you. And if I don't want to take a wife? Maybe not now, but perhaps later. I will speak with a matchmaker. I'm not interested in having a wife, Jebediah. You wish to be a bachelor? Yes. Life without a partner is hard. I know. Your relationship with God is your own. If you love him, he will guide you. And the people here? Will they love me if I live my life differently from how they live theirs? Have we not already accepted you, my son? This must be Agnes. There are over two dozen unopened letters from Enoch to Agnes here. They're all to Lancaster, but none with postage. Enoch must have been writing and writing to Agnes, and Jebediah never sent the letters. He must have sent the letter to Otto himself, hence the reply we found on him. I know not of whom you speak. That had to be referring to Agnes Friesen. So he confronts Jebediah with the letter from Otto, demanding to know where Agnes is, and is killed for it? 
Assuming all of that is true, where's Agnes? Well, if she's not where he says she is, one must think the worst. She's dead. And if she is, we may know where the body is. Just one more question. Oh, good, Llewellyn. You're like a puppy dog nipping at my heels today. What is it? Where is Agnes? Why would you ask me that? Just tell me, please. William, hurry. I hear footsteps. I assure you, telling me to hurry will not hasten this process, Julia. Get away from that door. What are you doing? Searching for evidence. Is this about Enoch Snyder? He died in a tragic accident. No, he didn't, Mr. Freeson. He died from blunt force trauma to the head. You killed him when he discovered what you'd done to your daughter, Agnes. She's not in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, is she? What are you saying? Is she dead? Dead? How dare you come into my home? And who are you people? Open this door. I will take no orders from you. Now leave my home. Open the door. I said get out. Open the door, Jebediah. Please. Father? What's going on? As you can see, my daughter is alive and well. That's pretty. Your hands are a little swollen. Are you experiencing any discomfort? No. Agnes, how long have you been locked in the attic? Locked in? We are keeping her there out of love, not punishment. How is hiding her away love? My daughter was betrothed, but not wed. For her condition to be known would bring great shame upon all of us. So you lied to everyone? She may have been shunned. Our entire family would have been judged for failing to raise children who follow the word of God. So you hid her? We agreed that she would deliver the child and we would raise it as our own. And your wife, she isn't really with child then? Mm. It was the best solution under the circumstances. You shunned your own brother for marrying outside of the faith. 20 years ago. It hurt me deeply, but it was deemed appropriate by myself and the other elders at the time. But why kill Enoch? As God is my witness, I did not harm that boy. But you were seen arguing with him just shortly before his death. He had discovered that Agnes wasn't in Pennsylvania. Uh, he received a letter from my cousin Otto that put the truth to the lie. Ben confronted you with it. I told him she was in a good place and safe. It couldn't make him understand that I was helping her. If you didn't kill him, what happened? I do not know. You may not believe me, but God knows the truth. Get away from my daughter. I was simply ensuring that she's healthy. I said, get away from her. He's still lying to us. Why do you say that? They know more about Enoch's demise than they're saying. Well, how can you be sure? I assure you, Enoch did not father Agnes's child. Meaning? Enoch and Agnes were already supposed to get married. What would have stopped the family from simply moving up the wedding date rather than this elaborate plan to hide her in the attic for nine months? Even if she had a different suitor, what does that change? If Enoch had no interest in marrying Agnes, why not allow her to marry whomever she pleased? It's someone the family finds highly undesirable. A union that would bring even more shame than a child out of wedlock. The ring. The what? We need to speak to Agnes. I'd rather not face Jebediah right now. Agnes, could you hold out your hands? What are you doing? When's the last time you left the house? She hasn't been out of the house for months. 
And then where did you get that ring? The grass is still fresh. I... Agnes, someone's been visiting you, haven't they? And your parents are out? Speak up, girl. Someone's been visiting me here. I'm sorry, Papa. Who? I can't say. You may feel it shameful, but I promise you, there'll be no judgment from us. Just time to tell them, dear. No, it's enough for the lies. Did not. Her suitor is Mervyn Freeson. Your brother's son? Yeah. The one you shunned and cast out? He can never know. No one can ever know. But I want to marry Mervyn. We have discussed this. Mervyn Freeson is the one that found Enoch Snyder. Yes, I lied to you. Of that, I'm guilty. But I did not kill Enoch Snyder. Tell us exactly what happened. I knew Agnes was being hidden by her parents, but I had to see her. When her family was at the meeting house, I sneaked into the attic. Did Enoch know about this? No, but he didn't want to marry her anyway. What happened the day he died? I was leaving Agnes's place when I found him injured on Uncle Jebediah's property. That's why I lied. I couldn't tell you where I was when I saw him. Oh, you panicked because you weren't supposed to be there? But he was hurt. I, I, I couldn't leave him. So I picked him up and I brought him to you. You lied to these fine people, to your own father. I'm sorry, father. All right, take us to where you really found him. I found him lying just here. No rocks that he could have fallen onto. It's still most likely that a rock was used as the weapon. There's a place back here where rock pickers leave their findings. They dump them in the creek. Right down there. It's nothing but rocks. Julia. Yes, that's definitely blood. There's something else here. Something left by the killer. Possibly, but Mennonites don't wear jewelry. Except for watches. I feel as if I've seen that somewhere before. I noticed your watch chain in this photograph earlier. It caught my eye because I didn't think Mennonites wore jewelry. Yes, it is mine. Arthur? Tell him you did not hurt the boy. I cannot. <laughs> Why did you do it? Enoch discovered the truth. He threatened to tell Abraham's colony that he'd found Agnes in her attic. Oh. He wanted out of the engagement. I told him it wasn't possible that it would ruin everything. Arthur. I saw him in the field and I begged him not to tell. He called us false Mennonites in the eyes of God and that we would be excommunicated as liars and hypocrites who shunned Abraham for a much lesser crime. What have you done? Lord, forgive me. I knew not what I was doing, but I had to stop him. Mrs. Friesen, you are guilty of murder. Please forgive me, Jebediah. Please forgive me. It is not for me to forgive.
decided not to stay? This isn't the place for me. Come with us. Thank you, but no. Where will you go? I don't know. Should have known my wish for utopia was folly. Not folly. He'll strive for something better. Thank you for what you did for Enoch. Perhaps he'll find justice in heaven. <laughs>